Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection from First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo on this August 17th of 2022. I'm Pastor Joel. I'm uh, David Welch, seminary and intern. Awesome, and we are glad to uh, get into this again. I want to apologize for missing last week. Last week was busy and uh, pretty much everybody had some other things to do, but we're excited to get back into God's Word today. Uh, as, as usual, we are reading from the Daily Lectionary and... Uh, that includes four psalms and an Old Testament passage and a gospel lesson and an, an epistle, typically. Um, and so we're going to alternate reading those together, and we'll have a discussion about it, and then uh, pray that God would reveal to us what He so desires. So let's go ahead and open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to be in your word, to read it, to study it, to reflect upon it. Uh, to talk about it and trust in all of these things that you are speaking to us because you are a God who speaks, you are a God who acts, you are involved in history and you are involved in our lives today in the present and you are leading us forward into uh, to the future that you have planned and prepared for us. So uh, on this day we want to honor you and glorify you and lift up your holy name and in all that we do and say today you be glorified and may the body of Christ be encouraged. We thank you and praise you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to start today with Psalm 15. And let's see, there we go. Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. Our second psalm is Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of a horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Hebrew scripture today comes from Judges chapter 18, verses 16 through 31. While the 600 men of the Danites, armed with their weapons of war, stood by the entrance of the gate, the five men who had gone to spy out the land proceeded to enter and take the idol of cast metal, the ephod, and the teraphim. The priest was standing by the entrance of the gate with the 600 men armed with weapons of war. When the men went into Micah's house and took the idol of cast metal, the ephod, and the teraphim, the priest said to them, What are you doing? They said to him, Keep quiet, put your hand over your mouth, and come with us, and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for you to be priest in the house of one person, or to be priest to a tribe and clan in Israel? Then the priest accepted the offer. He took the ephod, the teraphim, and the idol, and went along with the people. 
So they returned, so they resumed their journey, putting the little ones, the livestock, and the goods in front of them. When they were some distance from the home of Micah, the men who were in the houses near Micah's house were called out, and they overtook the Danites. They shouted to the Danites, who turned around and said to Micah, What is the matter that you come with such a company? He replied, You take my gods that I made and the priest and go away, and what have I left? How then can you ask me what is the matter? And the Danites said to him, you had better not let your voice be heard among us, or else hot-tempered fellows will attack you, and you will lose your life and the lives of your household. Then the Danites went their way. When Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back to his home. The Danites, having, having taken what Micah had made, and the priest who belonged to him, came to Laish, to a people quiet and unsuspecting, put them to the sword, and burned down the city. There was no deliverer, because it was far from Sidon, and they had no dealings with Aram. It was in the valley that belonged to beth Rohab. They rebuilt the city and lived in it. They named the city Dan after their ancestor Dan, who was born to Israel, but the name of the city was formerly Laish. Then the Danites set up the idol for themselves. Jonathan, son of Gershom, son of Moses, and his sons were priests to the tribe of the Danites until the time the land went into captivity. So they maintained as their own Micah's idol that he had made as long as the house of God was at Shiloh. Our New Testament reading comes from Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 25. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain God's gift with money. You have no part or share in this, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and the chains of wickedness. Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord that nothing of what you have said may happen to you. Now after Peter and John had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem proclaiming the good news to many villages of the Samaritans. Our Gospel reading is from John chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, and also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated so also the fish as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. 
So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. And Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king. He withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Our third psalm is Psalm 48. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, in the city of our God, his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth, Mount Zion, in the far north, the city of the great king. Within its citadels, God has shown himself sure defense. Then the kings assembled. They came on together. As soon as they saw it, they were astounded. They were in panic. They took to flight. Trembling took hold of them there, pains as of a woman in labor, as when an east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which God establishes forever. We ponder your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your name, O God, like your praise, reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with victory. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Walk about Zion, go all around it, count its towers, consider well its ramparts, go through its citadels, that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever. He will be our guide forever. And our final psalm today is Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, David, you and I haven't done a midweek connection in a while, and uh, I've really uh, enjoyed the, the times that we have had to do this. Um, and man, what an interesting collection of passages today, you know, the Danites, the Simon the Magician, the feeding of the 5,000, uh, powerful psalms of, of uh, expectation and praise, um, these things working out. Uh, I kind of don't even know where I want to start today uh, with these. I, I, think, I think about uh, the Acts passage in particular, uh, Acts chapter 8, this interaction that um, that the, the, the uh, disciples are having with this uh, one Simon the magician and how you know the previous passage for that it was talking about how uh, Simon was participating in that community and actually there was great joy going on and there was uh, a desire that you know he he eagerly, listened to them and he was uh, 
marveling at what God was doing through their preaching. Um, and, he, and it says uh, previously in Acts 8, 13, that even Simon himself believed and he was baptized and he stayed with Philip and was amazed and saw all these miracles taking place. And, and something then happens, and I don't know exactly what happens in Simon's heart, but um, maybe it's his past life uh, influencing him. Maybe it's uh, uh, the all too human uh, tendency to seek our own fame or seek our own power. Uh, but this desire that he has to, uh, to purchase the power of the Holy Spirit really just strikes me as, um, uh, I guess in a way, typical of what humans frequently try to do. We see something good and we want it, and we mm -hmm. then try to buy it. Mm -hmm. And obviously Simon probably then became, you know, he, he probably became rich through his previous practice of magic. You know, people probably came to him seeking uh, you know, incantations or seeking potions or whatever it was that he did with his magic to to control his 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 magical attempt to control the spiritual world. And here's actually the spiritual world. Here's God Himself directly intervening in the lives of the people. And he's like, I want I want that. And then it becomes kind of this consuming thing for him not to only receive from but to control it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so that admonition that uh, that Peter and, and and John you know give against him, uh, man, what a harsh word! But in a way, what a loving word! You know, you can't buy this. Mm -hmm. uh, the spirit of God is not for sale. Yeah. Um, and in our very uh, consumer-oriented world, uh, you know, everything's for sale, right? You know, you can buy anything you want buy it online or you can buy it in the dark alleys it doesn't matter you can buy what you want but the spirit of God is not for sale yeah I think uh, even beyond that our uh, our culture today has the idea that uh, you know any any problem any issue any desire can be solved um whether it's by money or by science or by technology mm -hmm. or you know an exercise, all of these are, are ways in which we as people exercise our power right. in the world. We have the idea that there's no there's no problem that can't be uh, solved by uh, by that power. But um, I think you know here we see that God is not a part of that system. God is not a part of our economy. Uh, God is not subject to that power. Uh, God doesn't owe anything to anybody. Uh, he's, he's not bound by, you know, whatever, whatever, um, you know, claim we may try to make on him. He, he's, God and he he does his will um, and uh, and we uh, our our call is to is to faith and to obedience it's not to attempt to control that will or or attempt to control what God does uh, to to shape that will to fit with our purposes that's so tempting for us to try to do I think um, to uh, and we and we even get upset when God doesn't do what we what we want Him to, right? Uh, as if uh, as if what we want is somehow you know normative or somehow the standard that God has to meet. Uh, but God's at work, and and He has His purposes, and He will accomplish them. And uh, He He uh, He He's the one who. The only one who gives the power of the Spirit, that's only by, by His grace. Right. And I think that actually has a, an interesting connection to the Judges passage today with the Danites. Chapter 18 does start with that ordinary refrain of there was no king in Israel at the time and people were doing 
what they felt was right in their own eyes. And the Danites, who were a tribe, one of the 12 tribes of Israel, were wandering in the promised land, and they did not yet have a land for themselves. And it's interesting then how they go about trying to get one. They get a group of soldiers together, and they march around, and they essentially take that which what they want. And, and, and interestingly enough, what they take is the personal priest of a guy and his personal idol um, and his personal uh, religious artifacts, and they take those and, and, and then they go into a city and kill all the inhabitants there and essentially set up their own little place where they have their own little worship with their own little priest. <laughs> That they stole from somebody else and basically appropriated for themselves yeah. and so you know we we struggle with Simon the magician like how could you possibly do that well, well the Danites they had been experiencing all of the other ways that God had been providing for them and then they don't continue in that line they grasp something of their own steal from other people and essentially set up a false god they have set up uh, a stolen idol as their own god and, and there's a weird syncretism that exists there's still some maybe even verbal adherence or or um, assent to yeah well you know we know that god is in Shiloh but we have god here that yes there's a place where we could worship together but this is what we are going to do ourselves um Yes. Yeah. It's interesting. Even in this story, they essentially purchase the services of the Absolutely. of this priest, yes. and, and by extension, they purchase the protection, whatever protection they think this idol is going to give them. Uh, and so, you know, there's a sense in which they're they're out here um, thinking that. You know, they're kind of masters of everything and they're going to make things the way they want them to be whether that's through you know force or um, in, in this case through force and, and uh, so um, yeah it's it's very very interesting and the, the, the contrast then to Jesus with the feeding of the 5,000 where here uh, Jesus is demonstrating the capacity to heal people. He's, he's demonstrating miracles. People come out to see him. And uh, yet, from a material perspective, he has very, very little. He's got these five loaves and the two fish that are presented to him. Uh, and from that, he is able to feed, you know, 5,000 men and, you know, the, the, the families that had come with them and have enough left over to fill 12 baskets. And what's interesting, uh, in verse 14, after they've eaten their fill and they've got the 12 baskets left over, when the people saw the sign that he had done, uh, he, they began to say, this indeed is the prophet who's come to the world. But I think the sign that they're referring to is not even necessarily the production of food enough to feed 5,000, as miraculous that, as that is. We've got five loaves of bread, and my understanding would be that the the people would understand five as the the Pentateuch, the 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 writings of you know, the the story of the foundation of the people of Israel, and then the two fish, as in the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. These are that which is given by God. And then the 12 baskets left over, obviously representing the 12 tribes of Israel in their entirety. So it's Jesus is coming on saying, look, um, I, I am the one who has created you to begin with. I am the God of the universe who established the people of Israel as my people for my purposes, with my law, with my covenant, with my prophetic words. And and I'm feeding you yeah. with that which they need, not just the physical food, but his, his very presence that is God, indeed God with us, Emmanuel, God with us. Here's Jesus doing these things. And then there's that weird juxtaposition again. 
they seek to take him by force and make him king, and he withdraws, which would be in direct contrast to the Danites and judges, which would be in direct contrast to Simon the magician. He, he is himself. He is a he brings himself as a gift. He is not controlled. He is not forced into things. He does not force himself on us. Um, just a massive contrast in character between Jesus and, and our two antagonists in the other passages. Yeah, and you even have the theme of money here again, where Philip says, right. look, Jesus, six months wages won't purchase enough bread, but you know, Jesus doesn't need our, our right. money. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't need us to accomplish his purposes. Mm -hmm. And he certainly, in this passage, also doesn't subject himself to the the will of of this crowd right. um, or the power that this crowd was about to exercise to force him to become king. Uh, God is. God has all he needs to accomplish his purposes. Right. Uh, and he has his own purposes, and they're not ours, but he does invite us to participate in those purposes. Right. Um, uh, even the contrast between there's 5,000 men here, which is, uh, what, do the math real quick, six times as large as the 500, uh, you know, five times as large as the 600 Danites. You know, it's like, it's a bigger army. Yeah. Uh, with 5,000 people, Jesus could have conquered a lot of territory in that area. You know, I'm sure the Romans would have smashed it up or whatever it might happen to be, but certainly more significant than the size of the Danites. And he he just dismisses that option. Mm -hmm. He's just like, nope. Like you said earlier, he doesn't participate in our economy in that way. He's wholly and fully above us. You know, it's just... He operates in a different capacity. Yeah, you know, God is God is a personal God, and He wants a personal relationship with us. But we have to remember that He's not our personal God. Right. 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 Yeah, in the sense that we do not control Him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Good stuff today. Yeah. yeah, I think, um, yeah, thank you for participating in that discussion. Yeah. Um, how about you, uh, how about you close us in prayer? That'd be all right? Sure. All right. Yeah. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your word and uh, just, just the rich treasure that it is whenever we uh, turn our attention to it. Uh, even, even a passage that's strange, like the passage from Judges, uh, is is just uh, there's there's a wealth of wisdom there uh, if we if we sit down and open our hearts and, and reflect um, God I, I pray that uh, you would uh, forgive us for the times when we've tried to control you when we've tried to make you serve our purposes uh, give us grace to participate in your plan and your purposes to be servants uh, in all things. Uh, help us to be humble, uh, to be gracious to others, and uh, to, to truly reflect your character and your love in this world. Uh, thank you for this time, and, and uh, may, we, may we always have eyes to see and ears to hear when you are speaking. It's in the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, and I appreciate all of you joining us. And if you have any questions for me or for David or uh, just in general about the church or what we talked about today, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us, and we'd be happy to pray with you and listen to your concerns and discuss uh, weighty matters and uh, see how that moves forward. But I uh, appreciate you guys watching, and I certainly hope that you will, if you have the capacity to join us in worship on Sunday mornings. 1030 here at church uh, or you can watch online at a later time but I certainly want to invite everyone to be uh, greater participants in what we are doing not just observers of it 
but uh, participating in that which is going on here at the church or in a church of your own uh, local setting. Uh, get involved with people, get to know people, love people, serve people, and then experience God's uh, presence in and through you, uh, through his Holy Spirit as, you, as we all follow Jesus Christ together. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.